Mm. Oh, oh, okay. Cool. Uh, okay, uh, let's get started. So, uh, so as I announced, also, we will take the final exam uh, on the next week. And then, so, you know, the during the regular time, regular class time of uh, on Thursday, so next Thursday, right? Not, not coming Thursday, so it's the next Thursday of next week, okay? So we take the final uh, at that time. And uh, so I plan to uh, actually uh, the, the next class, the next class will be the, the last class of this course, okay? And then on, on, on Thursday, the next Thursday, not, not today, so next Thursday, so there is no class, okay? So then, so we will take the final exam on next Thursday, not, not coming. So next, the Thursday of the next week. Also, uh, so you know, so I posted the lab, lab and uh, uh, the third, third homework assignment, okay? And then, so, so it's very important to uh, try to solve the, the homework assignment questions by yourself. So which I believe the so you know the <clears throat> the problem the questions in the final exam can be uh, similar to the the questions in the homework assignment and then homework assignment covers the the sequential logic part so actually the final exam will also cover the sequential logic and then some very low part at the, the midterm exam okay but you know <laughs> so. The sequential sequential logic also includes the combinational logic, right? So, so so which is that also you need to uh know about the, some the knowledge on uh combinational logic, okay? Um, okay. And then so I will I briefly explain about the the lab assignment. So this is a design lab. So actually so. So this is the target design. So so we are learning about the adder, right? So we learned about the the carry pro carry the adder. And then also you also we learned about the the carry required adder. So so actually so we use carry required adder to reduce the delay. So it's a propagation delay of adder. And then also I explained that the delay of combinational logic is very critical, right? So as we learn, the because of setup time constraint, the delay of combinational logic decides the clock period, okay? And then actually the performance of this the system is proportional usually proportional to the clock frequency. And then clock frequency is the inverse of clock period. So when we design uh, this the system, we we need to usually we need to uh, reduce the clock period. Right? So everyone wants uh, the high performance, right? So everyone wants the high performance system. So that's why we need to reduce the clock period. We also learn about this issue in computer architecture course. Okay, it's very important, it's very critical. So, and then we learn that. So <clears throat> usually there are <clears throat> a flip flops then you know the registers between <clears throat> uh on the input side of combination analysis and then output side of combination combination analysis. As you can see in this figure, okay. So if you see that this figure, so you can observe that. So there is adder. So adder is a combinational adder is a combinational logic. And then as you can see, so this is the register. So register is a group of deep flip flops, right? And then you can find that A input, B input, and then carry in is the input of deep flip flop and then you know seen on the q a on the q and b on the q these are the 
the up curve deeply flat. But you can also observe that this up signal of deeply flat becomes the input of adder, right? Also, you can find that output wizard, the output signal of adder is the combination of it becomes the input of deeply flat. So the tasks in this uh, uh, design map is to design, is to design uh, adder, two different types of adder. So we learned about the uh, carry adder, uh, replicate adder, RCA, RCA, uh, the replicate adder. So, and then, but we also learned that the delay, delay of replicate adder is, as a, is a rather, uh, Long, okay, it's a high. So, so in it, in order to in, in order to improve the performance, then we can use carry lookalike adder. So, so you are requested to design replicate adder and then carry lookalike adder using structural models of system value. So structural model means that, so actually if, oh, okay. 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 So I will share the, another. So you can you can find the uh so it's a system value log file. So in this system value log file, you can find the, the very simple uh combinational logic modules. Okay, and then these modules actually implement the basic logic gate. So as you can see, so you can find the module name here. It's so like the exclusive or two. So which means it is the to input exclusive OR, right? And then you can find the end two or two and the end three. And then, so we learned that, so in the previous class, we learned that we can implement four adder and half adder using basic logic gate, right? So we can so generate the sum, sum outputs using exclusive OR gate. Right, and then we can also generate the carry out using or gate and gate and or gate. Right, so actually in this uh, gate that SV, I provide the basic logic gate. So some some modules for that implements the basic logic gate. So you can find the modules here. But but for this design, you need you need only. Uh, these modules, okay, to implement the the full adder, half adder, and uh, ripple carry adder, and then carry loop adder, okay. Also, so it is because so in this module, I represent the delay, okay. So, uh, so this is not PDF, so we can find the this part here. So what is this? This is the delay. So delay representation in System value logo. So it represents that. So this is the example. So so this example shows that exclusive or gate to input exclusive or gate. The delay is the ten picosecond. So you can build the full headers and half headers using uh, this this basic logic gate. Then full headers and half headers also exceeded the delays, right? Because the basic, so you know, the basic logic gates exceeded the delay, and then we build, so like the layer of block, then we can build the full address by combining the basic logic gate. Then the full header also exceeded the delay, okay? And then we can also uh, build a ripple carry header by combining Full adders, right? So then, the uh, our 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 replicate adder will also exhibit the delays, right? So what does that mean? 
So we can actually you need to uh, design. You need to design uh, this adder. So, but you need to design two different types of adder. Okay, and then as I mentioned, as we learn, these two these two different adders will exhibit different timing specifications, like the different delay. Right, so you know, actually, the carry required is faster, right? The carry required is usually faster than uh, referee carry. Okay, so I also provide the uh, test bench file, and then you can also find that the test bench file includes the clock signal. Okay, so this is the module you need to design, and then also, but I provide the, the skeleton design. Okay, like other design labs. <clears throat> so actually you need to design only this part. Okay. And then you need to connect the output of adders to the input of output flip-flops. So this module has uh inputs like the C in, A, B, and clock also reset. And then the output signals are S and C out. So I provide the test bench that can run uh, this logic. Okay. So, okay, and then you can simulate the, 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 the your design the module, your, your module, and then test bench using the cost variable. So, so you need to use the, this option, okay, because so we are using system bell log. So if you do not include the, this option, then the cost bell log will uh, compile your design module using the old time. So it's a so old version of bell log. But, but this old version of bell log uh, does not support the, some features. Okay, then you can get some errors, the compile errors. So please includes the, this option, like G2005 dash SV, okay? Then you're also, I provide the, the very smart, the smart test bench file. So which means that this test bench file automatically checks your result. So, I mean the output result of adder. Okay, so if the design is incorrect, then the test bench will report that the output signals are incorrect. Okay, but if your design is correct, then it's okay. Then the, the test bench will not report any outputs. Okay, so if you are interested, then you can. Uh, read the, the, this the test bench design. So as I mentioned, the verification is also important because we, we need to design smart smart test bench for our design, right? It's very important. So, and then, so you, you need to design the carrier required header. So like this, so we learn about the, this uh, structure uh, during this class, okay? And then, so actually, uh, I provide the, uh, enough, uh, enough clock period. But in the, so you, you know, in the second question, so like here, so the firstly, you can check the, uh, the output, so your you, <coughs> the outputs outputs of your design. Okay, this is the question A, and then in the question B, then you need to figure out the shortest clock period. Okay, so and then by reducing the clock period by uh ten picosecond, then you can just figure out the shortest clock period, shortest allowed clock period. 
做到什么？所以，如果我们的 test bench file， 等我，呃，我设的 discrete t 就是 discrete period， 就是 zero point six nanosecond， right？ is the discrete period， but it's enough。So， if you design the repository editor， also， so if you design， uh， can you require the editor correctly？ then the output is also correct， okay？ because The clock period is you know it's longer than the delay of your address, right? But so you know the clock is here, but clock period is shorter than the delay of address. Then incorrect result will be sampled by this deep block, right? So and then if incorrect Result assembled, then this bench will take the is incorrect result. Okay, incorrect output. So then, how can you figure out the shortest clock period? So if you test the the question A, so which which means that oh, using the Long, long clock period, then all outputs are okay. Then it means that oh, your design is correct, right? Then we can reduce. So you know, so we can change the this number in the test bench file, right? We can reduce the this clock period number, right? So, for example, we can reduce this to the zero point five, and then if we detect that oh, errors are detected, the incorrect results are detected, then which means that the clock period is shorter than the the delay of error. Is it because so if your clock period is long, okay, so it's a high, then your design is okay, your your design generates the correct. Output. So it means that your design is correct. Okay, but if you then if you reduce the clock period like the zero point five, then your design generate the incorrect output. So it means that oh, clock period is shorter than the delay of your error. Okay, then you can increase the clock period like the zero point five one. You can you can check the output, and then if the results are still incorrect, then you can also increase the zero like the zero point five two, like this. Then you can figure out the shortest allowable clock period. Okay, the shortest clock period. So by doing this, so you can figure out the the shortest clock period, which means that this clock can Uh, make the the performance of the system high, okay? Because it's too distant. The clock frequency is high, okay? So, any question? Okay. Let's cover uh, today's topic. So, so we learned about the uh, uh, ripple carrier. No? And ripple carrier, as, uh, as you can see, so you can also read the, the, the lab design document. So, lab design document also provides the, the uh, valuable information about the, the adder design. Okay? So in the previous class, we learned about the uh, ripple carry adder. So in the ripple carry adder, we can just connect the carry out of the previous digit to the carry in of current digit. Okay. So and then I I mentioned that this path, this path is the critical path. So it means the the longest delay path, right? 
So this is because so like the normal uh where is the okay. normal add operation so like the the, the humans the carry is properly from LSB to MSB like this. So that's why it's called the replicator. Okay. So because the carries are just propagated from LSB to the MSB, this path is the longest path. Okay. And then <clears throat> if you see the, <clears throat> the, the MSB, the MSB of the wizard, <clears throat> like the MSB of some, and you can find that as as thirty one is the a thirty one exclusive of what b thirty one exclusive of what b thirty right but like, you know this will the c thirty will be determined lane so which means that s thirty one also generated late late okay. So this is the uh, problem problem of uh, <clears throat> replicator. So and then in order to uh, resolve this problem, the researchers uh, proposed carry lookoid. Okay. So the researchers focus on the, the this carry generation logic, right? Is is it because we learned that in a Ripple carrier, carry, carry generation and then carry propagation is the critical part. It's a critical, so this is the, the longest delay part in ripple carrier adder. So researchers focus on this one, okay, this equation, the Boolean equation. And then this Boolean equation can be read it like the a B plus A plus B and C. Okay. And then we can observe that oh this is the carry in. So it's the carry from the previous digit. And then carry is actually multiplied. So ended the carry is ended by A plus B. Then this part will be one. Okay. If the if the this is one and then this is one, then this will be one. Okay. So we can observe that actually a plus b propagate. Okay. If the c is one, then this is one, right? And then if the c is zero, then this is zero. But when if a plus b is one, so if the a plus b is one, then c is actually propagated, right? So this, that's why a plus b is called the propagation. And then if we study this term, then this is the a and b. So you can find that the, there is no there is no carry in this term. So it's just A, B, okay? So which means if the A, B is one, then C, L is actually one, regardless of this term, okay? So this term A, B is called the generation, okay? So which means that the carry is generated in this digit. The A plus B is the propagation because the previous carry, the carry from previous digit is propagated because the C out, is C out if the A plus B is equal to one, right? So we can define the generation and propagation right here. Then we can rewrite the 
the this carry generation equation like the C I O G I plus P I and C I minus L. But why? Why do we need to uh <clears throat> classify classify carry propagation and carry generation? So we want we want to know the the carry output carry output quickly. Okay. So but you may think that oh what's the benefit? <laughs> is it because if the, the, the number of digit is small, then actually the carry carry required adder does not exhibit any benefits. So it is because actually the carry, so if you just see the this four bit signal, okay, then actually like the ripple carry adder, the carry is also propagated, right? But actually, in order to reduce the the delay delay of adder using carry loop adder, then we need to organize the the adder like the uh, where is it adder like the this one okay, and then. This large block is just connected. So actually, the carry loop adder just uh, eliminate eliminate the, some critical delay problem. But actually, actually, if the, the digit number is small, then actually there is no benefit because so enough to get the, some carry generation from the, this block, then we also need to propagate or generate the, the carries from each digit, okay? But by doing this, we can quickly calculate the, the carry out. So you need to remember that we can quickly calculate the, this carry out, okay? And then this carry out is also delivered to the, the next block. So by doing this, we can reduce the delay. So I mean, some, some is just saying, okay, some, some. So actually we need to generate the sum for the, this 4-bit block. But this 4-bit block, then we can quickly figure out the carry. So that's why this adder is called the carry loop because the carry is quickly generated. So loop oiled. So uh, because we uh, classify the, the carry uh, <clears throat> the Boolean equation of carry out like the so carry propagation and then carry generation. So we can on those we can firstly generate the carry the P signal, the carry propagation for each digit like this, and then carry generation for each digit. Okay. And then you can understand the how the carries are generated or propagated based on the definition, right? So for example. So this is the example. So we put for each color, so for each digit, we can generate the propagation and generation, the so PI and GI. So you can find the, the this is the example. You can find the PI and GI for each digit, right? And then this is the carry in, and then this is the carry out. So if we see the this carry propagation and then carry generation for each digit, then actually if we just know the, the first carry in, okay? Like the CI minus one, then we can quickly calculate the carry out, the how? Oh, 
In this example, this is the tariff propagation. And then, you know, the tariff propagation for each digit, the tariff propagations are for all digits are ones, right? So what does it mean? If the C i minus one is uh, C, so like the C minus one, C minus one is one, right? What's the carry out for its four bit block? The carry out is obviously same to C i minus one. The carry in, right? Based on the definition, it propagate, 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 propagate. So, oh, it's a one, 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 one. So, it's a just propagate. It's a there is no block. So, if, if the C, I, C minus one is so like a C, if the C minus one equal one, then C three is a carry out, it's also one. You can easily know. Okay. Also, if the C minus one is a zero, what is the C three is a carry out? It is actually one. Why? Because actually the propagation part is zero because c minus one is zero right but we can observe generation p and then this generation will be also propagated so c out is also one so by combining propagation b <coughs> and generation b of each digit we can actually quickly, quickly generate the, quickly figure out the carry out, okay? Carry out signal. So, this is another example that you can also you know, try the, this example. Then, as I mentioned, the carry required is organized using block, carry required block. So it's generate, it's defined like the block propagate and block generate. So as I mentioned, so actually the, the adders, the adders handle the large numbers, the large bits. Okay. So usually, so you know, the C, the in C, the integer type in, uh, integer type includes the four byte data, which means 32 bit. So which means if we just execute the integer operation, integer adder, integer added, then we require 32 bit adder, right? So actually the adders, the adders handle the large bit data, okay, large bit number. Okay, this because this is the, the basic the data type in uh computer system. Okay. So if you use the Python, the Python does not uh, have any uh, data type for the number. So number is just a number, like the integer or uh, floating point. But in C, we can just de define the size, the size of number, size of integer or size of floating point. So actually integer is a four byte, and then the long, long time is the eight byte. Okay, so we can define. So anyway, Usually in, in CPU, the CPU includes the <coughs> 32 bit or 64 bit adders, right? So we want we want to reduce the delay, delay of adder. So it is, it is because if we reduce the delay of adder, then we can increase the clock frequency of CPU. Okay. Okay. So first, then we need to define block propagate and block generate. So it is because we learned that in adder the, the carry propagation. Carry propagation is the critical part. Okay. 
So we in this example, we just group the four bits digit, the four bits of a number as the 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 CLA, the the carry required block. Okay, we so we just focus on the this four bit blocks. And then in this block, we want to figure out carry propagation. Okay, and then carry generation for this block. And then, so you know, this if we just use the P3 down to zero, then it represents the, the block propagation for the digit number three down to zero. Okay, so it's a block propagation. So which means, oh, this is a P three down to zero, and then if the P three down to zero is one, then C minus one, C minus one is just propagated, and then to the C, C three. Okay, this is the output of the so output carry. Okay, then what is P3 down to zero? Obviously, in order to propagate the C minus one to C3, all propagation bits need to, need to be one. Right? Obviously, right? C minus one is propagated, but this propagation is kind of a uh, series of propagation, right? So actually, in order to propagate the C minus one to the C3, then P0 needs to be one, P1 it also needs to be one, P2, P3 also one. So P3 down to zero. So this is the propagation of carry required block. P3 down to zero. 3 down to zero is equivalent to P3 and P2 and P1 and P0. Okay? And then, you know, it's obviously true, right? Because this is the definition of propagation. Right? So, so this is the example. So in this example, P3 down to zero is P3 at, at the end of all P, and then it's one. So if the carry in is one, then C3 is also one. Okay, so actually C minus one is propagated. This is another example. So it's a P, then P3 down to zero is zero because you can find the zero here. Okay, I think actually the propagation is easy to understand. The block propagation is easy to understand. How about the generation? How can you understand the block generation? So generation means that the regardless of the carry in, the this block generator carry. Okay, that is the the meaning of generation. And how? So we can. So we can also calculate, we can also calculate the generation signal for each digit, right? Like G0, G1, G2, G3, right? The all zeros in this example. And then propagation is actually one to one. Then is the, uh, does this block generate the carry? So I, mean, I mentioned that generation means that Regardless of the carry in, the block generate carry out. Okay, it means that the carry out is one. Regardless of carry in. Actually, no. It is because oh, this digit does not generate 
carry, right? Because the deceleration bit is zero. So, and then all these does not generate. So actually, the generated carry, so the carry can be propagated, but because the generate, all generation bits are <clears throat> zero, actually this block does not generate carry. Okay, now how about this one? So, the last digit, the MS LSB generate carry, right? <clears throat> because the G0 is 1. This carry will be propagated by this propagation bit, the propagation of next bit, right? Because, oh, this is the generate the carry generation in this digit, okay, the, the carry, and then, oh, this propagation, so carry will be propagated, okay, but, oh, this is zero, but carry is propagated, but carry is not propagated at this one. So what does that mean? Use by combining propagation bit inside the block and then generate the bit of inside the block, we can calculate the block generation. How? Oh, if the generated carry, the generation bit can be propagated until the, the carry out, then we can say that, oh, this block generate, generate the carry. Is it because the carry is generated inside of the block, right? And then oh, the generated carry can be propagated. You understand? Okay, so. Actually, so if you read this slide, so you can find that uh, this is the equation. Equation of block generation. So how can you observe? So you can observe that oh, it's G three plus G two P three, and then G one P two P three, G zero P two P one P two P three, and then it represents what I explained, right? What does that mean? The block will generate carry if the MSB generate carry, right? If the column will generate carry, then oh, this block will generate carry. Or, I said or, the generate carry in column two can be propagated. Right? So, you know, this carry is generated inside of the block. And then it's propagated. So it means this term means the its explanation. Okay, then in column two and then propagated through column three. And likewise, the carry generation in column one can be propagated using P three P. So. Inside of a block, we can define the block generation like this. Okay, so it's a key three down to zero. And then, so as I mentioned, so key three down to zero is the end of all propagations. So, so this is the example. It can be the example here. Okay. And then this is the, the block, the carry required to add up using four bit carry required to add up blocks. Okay, we can organize. So, so if you read the, the, the first lab assignment, so you can find the explanation, and then you can find the, this video. Okay, so, 
So by, by connecting the four-bit block of Kelly Lucoid adder, so we can also build the third bit, the large bit Kelly Lucoid adder. Okay. And then inside the block, so this is the, <coughs> the, the schematic, the schematic of this Kelly Lucoid block. So it, inside the block, it looks like this. Okay. So inside the block is, you know, includes the uh, carry generate, carry out, okay? And then carry out is generated using by combining the P3, the so carry propagation, and C in. So because it's a carry propagation, okay? And carry generation. So, you know, the C out is G3 down to zero, plus P3 down to zero, and C minus one, so carry in, okay? So this is the equation. So, you can quickly generate carry out, and then this quickly generated carry out can be delivered to the next block. Okay, and then by using uh, this carry, then this next block also generates the carry out of C7, and then this carries are also propagated. Okay, but the benefit is that this C out will be calculated quickly. That is, this is the difference, difference from the ripple carry adder. Okay, so in, in a ripple carry adder, the carry is also propagated, but in, in the four bit block, the carry is calculated uh, late. Okay, it's slow. So this is the difference. So, so this is the organization of four bit carry required block. So you can find the, the input here, so it's the input of each digit, okay? And then you can also find the G0 and P0. And then carry required logic actually receive the carry in from the, the previous digit, the C minus one, and then it generates the C0, C1, C2, and then it also generates the C3. So we can generate the C0, C1, C2 using the carry propagation and then carry generation equation from the C minus one. And then if the C0, C1, C2 is uh, provided to the this full adder, right? It's a full adder, then we can calculate the sum. Okay? Like, like the exclusive, so it's an exclusive OR. And then, but C3 is quickly generated. And then inside, inside the group, this carry required logic uh, looks like this. Okay? So this is the inside of carry required logic. So, so in, in the in the in the first lab assignment, actually, you need to design the carry required logic, the so four plan of carry required logic like this. Okay, so actually, you can find the real equation here, and then so, so you know actually you need to uh, design the this carry required logic. You only using the the basic logic gate, the provided basic logic gate. Okay. So, so this is so you can also follow the uh, these steps, these steps, okay? Okay. So, okay. So, firstly, you so it's a so some steps for the carry required addition. So, first step is compute to GI and PI for all columns. So, we can calculate. Is GI and PI in parallel, right? Because GI and PI just use the A and B. So in order to calculate the GI and PI, we don't need to use carry. So we can just calculate the 
PGI and PI, you only use it A and B, right? So you know the A and B is the the other output of deep flip flop. It's synchronized with, with the clock. So you can quickly calculate A and B, GI and PI, and in parallel. Okay, this is very important in parallel. Okay, and then for the K bit block. So, so in this example, we use K equal three, uh, four, okay? K equal four, four bit block. So K equal four, this is example. Then we can calculate the propagate and generate of K bit block. Okay? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The initial C zero. So you, 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 you know initial C minus one, right? Carry in. Yes. Yeah. So, but from the start before the calculation, we need to know C C minus one. Right? Yeah, yeah. C minus one. C minus one is also the another input. So input from the outside. So it's start. Yeah, yeah, right. So from the input. Okay. So, okay. so C minus one is just input. So we cannot generate what? We cannot compute the C minus one, okay? But we can calculate C minus one after the initial output, right? Um, so it's actually, if you see the, uh, okay, so your pins, there is, okay. So you can find the, this block, okay? So you, and then you can find the C E is here. So actually, this is the C minus one, right? So like the other inputs like the A and B, C is also the input signal. So this the C is also provided from the outside module. Okay. So, for example, if we uh, deal with the 32 bit adder, right? So, which means that we need to provide the A is 31 down to zero, and then B and then 31 down to zero, right? Then we can calculate the A plus B. So, just use the logic table for the input, right? So, input is just input, the data. Okay, so in, in a computer system, the, this data is stored in the memory, and then the, actually the data is provided to the, the some modules. Okay, so and then the module also includes the, so this arithmetic logic, like arithmetic blocks, and the arithmetic block generate the output. But in this in this case, but C in C in is also another input. Okay, so it's a provide from the outside. So we don't need to compute the C in. So, but it can be possible, uh, like the, so if we use the uh, 64 bit adder, like the 63 down to zero, then in this case, so we can, we, we, we can, and then if we just have the 32 bit adder, then we actually need to split the A, so this data to the A 63 down to 32 and the A 31 down to zero. Okay. The first lead the A is added using the with the B 32 down to zero. Then the carry out will be generated, right? Then for the next step, when, when we calculate the A 63 down to 32 plus B 63 down to 32, then this generic shell needs to be provided. But sampled by the flip flop. So you can just understand that a thing is not provided. So which means we don't need to. Constant about the 
is C in. Okay. okay, so for the COVID activity block, that's in, in this example, so the K4, then we can uh, compute the propagate and generation is, and then this COVID carry required block is just connected like the replicate head of foot. As I mentioned, the C3 will be quickly computed, okay, using the this one, okay. Then, the finally, the, the final values are just computed using the final CLA block, okay. So, if we just, it's, a, it, it's not an exact uh, equation, but this is the conceptual, conceptual equation for computing the delay of carry required adder. So I, I mentioned this conceptual, not, not it's the, the result of this uh, delay is, uh, is, is, is not exact, it's, it's not incorrect, okay? But it's the conceptual. So PCLA, the delay of carry required adder looks like this. So firstly, we need to generate the TPG, but you know, the TPG just it's end gate and or gate. And then I mentioned that for each digit, we can compute the propagate and generation, propagate and generate in parallel, okay? So it just occupy just the TPG. And in order to calculate the, uh, so we, we need to know the this one, the propagate and generate the carry required or add a block, right? And then, so you know, this is also the Boolean equation. And then, so we need to add up the delay of this block propagation and block generation. Okay, so, and then, so actually C out, the carry out is the, the P K C I plus G K. So P K and G K is the, the propagation and then uh, generation of the block, the carry required block. And then, you know, this is the end OR, right? So CI is ended with the propagation, then OR is, then the OR with the generation. And then we have N divided by K blocks, right? Because the K, K is the, the bit list of the, the carry required block, and then minus one. So this is the delay of this one, okay? And then the final is the, the, the delay of the, the full adder. So like the, the, actually the final block, so we can just use the full adder, the so conceptually. So this is the, the delay of carry required adder, okay? So, and then as I mentioned, if the, the bit, width, bit width is uh, large, then generally faster. So much faster than ripple carry adder. Okay. And so if you uh complete the the, the force lab assignment, then you can understand the, this one. Okay. So you can calculate the so you know in the in the force lab assignment, I so you need to figure out the shortest clock period, and then you can find that. The clock period of carry required adder is shorter than the clock period of ripple carry adder. Okay. 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 So, so this is the end of carry required adder. You know, you know the carry required is a, a, a little bit uh, is a uh, hard to uh, understand, but you can just understand. Like the, 
Okay, propagation and carry uh, generation. Okay, and then prefix it. But then what's the, what is the issue? Not the still issue. So, so issue is that actually, so you can find that. So, you know, the carry required is it's faster than the ripple carry, but it's still slow. Why? Where is the pixel? Why? So it is a because it, so the carry is quickly generated, but the carry is also propagated between carry required blocks. So if we just represent the, this delay using O, like a big O, then actually the O is the, the N, O N, even though the, this N is divided by K, but we also, we, we can observe that the delay, we calculate like a big O N, so this is proper, is the linear, linear, linear equation of N, so N is the, the number of digits. This is actually same to the ripple carrier. Okay. So in, in a ripple carrier, the, the delay is proportional to the number of bits. And then carry required is also the delay of carry required header is also proportional to the number of bits O N. Okay. So which means if the number of bits is large, then the, the performance is still low, the slow. So in order to uh, solve the, this issue, then the researchers also uh, proposed the prefix adder. Okay, it's a prefix adder. So as I mentioned, the, this is the O and big O N. Okay, the prefix adder also use the clock propagation and then clock uh, no, <laughs> the carry propagation and carry generation. Okay. Like the but uh, this is the the sum sum of the this uh sum sum can be generated using AI exclusive one BI and then exclusive one C I minus one so the carry from previous digit and then C I C I minus one can be calculated using generation and propagation, that's what we learned, okay? We can calculate the G by, by using uh, the C, the carry, carry by using generation and propagation. And then, you know, carry required header, we just use the K bit, the fixed K bit block, right? So in this example, we just use the four bit carry required block, okay? But we can, we also use the 1 bit, 2 bit, 4 bit, 8 bit, or 16 bit, blah, blah, blah. So what does that mean? We can just increase the, the size of the this carry required block, the power of 2, like 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, like this. So what's the benefit? And it is it's low scale, like O log M. Okay, right? And then we already know O log M is less than, so usually in algorithm, O log M is less than O M. So we can build the prefix adder like this. How? So this is the um, steps. So we we just define G minus one is the generation bit from uh, generation bit for the minus one digit, okay, minus one bit, but it's equivalent to C in 
Okay, so input is the carry in. And then we can generate the C I minus one is the, the carry carry from the, the previous digit like the G I minus one down to minus one. Okay, so so by using this one, then we can, and then actually the final sum is so if we just use the, this property, then final sum is computed using g i minus one down to minus one. Okay, and then we can actually make the, this one by combining like this equation. Okay, g i j g i down to j is the g i down to k plus p i down to k and then g k minus one down to j. And then this is property. Property is just actually the same. Property is just property. Just, just, okay. So it's similar to the recursive browser, recursive behavior. It's put on the socket also. It's a high school mathematics, like recursive theory of the theory of the theory. So like this. So, so I believe it's a, so this is the kind of book, so uh, recursive equation, right? So, and then by generating the, this GIJ and the PIJ for the one, two, four, A, then we can calculate the, like this. So, so firstly, we can calculate the P and G for one bit block and then two bit block and four bit block. Like the power of two. Okay, then we can calculate the G I down to minus one. And then actually, this is the C I. Okay, then if we just use to figure out carry, then we can calculate the so this is the idea of prefix adder. So okay, so this is the example. So you can just read the example here. Okay, and then so this is the, the final schematic of prefix adder. So each i. So you can find the minus one because so we can just start from the minus one because minus one is just carry in. Okay, this is the initial state. And then then recursively we can calculate the G I minus one. Okay, see G I down to minus one. Okay. So for each digit, we can calculate the P I down to I and G I. So it's equivalent to the P I and G I. Okay. It's just the definition. Okay. For each digit. And then you can find the two bit carry required block. Okay. And then this carry required block can be generated using this logic. So using the uh, this one and this one, then we can calculate the P zero down to minus one, okay? So, you, so this is equivalent to the two bit carry for the adult block, okay? So, so I combine this one, we can calculate this one, this one, this one, this one, okay? So, you can find the zero down to minus one. So, and then I mentioned that zero down to minus one is equal to, actually, uh, this is the C uh, zero, okay? C zero is a carry out from the, this digit, digit number I, right? And then if we just use the C zero, then using the, this exclusive or, we can calculate the, Sum okay, so this sum this sum can be calculated using this one, but in order to calculate the sum of this digit, then we need to calculate the g one uh, the two 
down to minus one. Oh, no, but one down to minus one. Okay. G one one down to minus one. Okay. Because this is the C two. Uh, C one. Uh, C C C two. Okay. okay. So in order to calculate the g one down to minus one, actually is combined using zero down to minus one and this one, okay? Because it's one down to one and then one down to minus one. We need to combine this one. So we consider it. Then we can calculate the g one down to minus one, okay? So this is a k, this is a k. So this is a prefix adder, okay? So prefix adder means then, so we can, can, we can combine, we can build, we can combine uh, the C, the carry local as a block for it's like one bit, two, two bit, and then four bit, eight bit. So by, and then by combining this one, then we can reduce, we can reduce the O over N to O over log N, okay? Like the one, two, so it's a log scale. We, do, we can reduce the, the critical delay with the log scale. So this is the prefix adder idea, okay? So you can find the log here, okay? So this is just the uh, example. It's, it's not, so as I mentioned, this is conceptual, okay? It's not exactly um, correct. But you can find that if we use the prefix header, then it's a delay, it's a 1.2 nanosecond, and carry required is 3.3, and then replicate the 9 down 9.6. Okay, so and then if the so and then this is a 32 bit header, okay. So, so actually we can uh we can benefit from uh, this prefix header if the, the size of a bit is large. Okay, so that's why I cannot make the uh, lab assignment for prefix header. Okay, okay so and then this is the example header design, but actually uh, we can just simply implement the header using uh, in, in the system variable like this. So we can just use the plus sign, okay? But it, this can generate the carry propagation adder, but sometimes the, actually the cat2 analyze the timing, then cat2 actually replace the, the carry propagation adder to the default types of adder. So it is because uh, if we calculate the cost, then if we just consider the cost, then T the ripple carry adder, ripple carry adder is the, the lowest cost, and then carry required adder. But if we just consider the performance, then I say ripple carry adder is a oh, it's also low, low. Okay, so it's carry required adder. The performance is low, but the cost is also low. Okay. So this is a very simple. We can calculate, we can implement the adder using system variable like this. But the cat two can select the which type of adder will be implemented based on the time. Okay. Okay, so another example is a carry select header. Okay. <laughs> okay. I will explain about the carry select header. Okay, next question. Do the next class. Thumbs up.